If you follow us, and I hope you do, you know that we love things that shouldn't exist because they're too dumb, too ambitious, or let's face it, unnecessary. For almost 15 years now, that mantle has belonged to Earth Defense Force, a series so absolutely dumb that I can't stop playing. It's maybe the best worst series in modern video games, a guilty pleasure and a cornball masterpiece of stupid, dumb, cheesy fun. So cheesy, in fact, that it's struggled to find much more than a niche following outside of Japan. But things have changed in recent years, and in 2019, EDF is swinging for the fences. Just four months after releasing the fifth game in their numbered series, they're putting out another game, the spin-off Iron Rain, a marked departure from the brilliant but still admittedly formulaic bug-blasting action scene thus far. And they are going hard on making it successful in the West. Not only is it getting a simultaneous release worldwide, which is the first time that's ever happened for an EDF game, they also flew me, your favorite hashtag content creator out to San Francisco to preview it in February. I want you to know this because yes, we're going to talk about Iron Rain. And while I was thrilled to have the opportunity to check it out and then get laid out with the worst cold I've had in five years, I'm not going to go easy on this game. Just want to say what's up. Got a sore throat and this is how my voice sounds right now. How you doing? How you living? What's going on? It's just that we don't get offers like this, and if they're even reaching out to our weird little channel and letting us interview the series producer for 45 minutes, it shows that EDF means business. But enough about us. How did we get to a place where the West is getting two EDF games in the span of four months? It's time to talk Earth Defense Force. EDF! My first exposure to the series, like many Westerners, was with EDF 2017 for the Xbox 360. It was technically the third mainline game. The first two were PlayStation 2 exclusives. According to my interview with series producer Nobuyuki Okajima, they were not released in the United States because of, quote, heavy regulation from the hardware maker. I'm not sure the exact meaning of this. EDFs 1 and 2 were at least eventually released in the PAL region. However, this motivated developer Sandlot to move EDF 3, aka EDF 2017, to the 360 for its 2007 release. Upon release, EDF 2017 made a splash with the press, receiving some of the nicest mediocre reviews ever. It was a reaction that was hard to ignore at the time. Just a scratch. Just a scratch. Just a scratch. Just a scratch. The problem with EDF 2017, and most EDF games really, is that the style and vibe is what carries it, but it wasn't enough to carry everybody. 2017's numerous shortcomings were just too much for some people to ignore. EDF had finally landed in North America, but only for big weirdos like me who love some big dumb fun. Truly, the game lacked depth and variety, plus it didn't control or run all that great. And like, the 360 is capable of better, but look at this! Look at it struggling to fit it all on screen! Ah oh, yeah, I love this kind of garbage. Blasting waves of giant bugs, spiders, and robots, leveling giant skyscrapers. It was simple, it was satisfying, it was enormous fun, but like, man, that's it. The dialogue is hilarious. Please, Please just, just leave it, it to me! Down. Take that! Just cover me! Armored dead! Please, Please just leave it to me! me. But there's no story here, no villains, no characters really, just you and your brothers of the EDF. At the end of the day, it's what I call a podcast game. EDF 2017 is built around collecting weapons and health so that you can come back and complete the same missions on higher difficulties. Plus, it also features striking omissions like auto-saving or a run button. It shouldn't work, and for a lot of people, it didn't. I love this game, I have almost, almost 100%ed it, but there was room for improvement. And while the series has never shied away from being dumb, Lord knows it's never shied away from that, it has made strides to address and refine its signature gameplay in the entries that followed. Though it was a long wait, EDF 2017 received a meaningful sequel with EDF 2025 in early 2014. However, if I'm being truly honest here, it's worth skipping this one for the vastly improved HD re-release version EDF 4.1, released on PlayStation 4 in late 2015 and a few months later on Steam. If you've never played Earth Defense Force before, this is an excellent place to start. Multiple classes, including my girl the Wing Diver, aka The Goddesses of Victory have arrived! A stupid long campaign, auto-saving, online co-op, fast load times, much improved frame rate, plus more monsters, more robots, more kaiju-sized mega bosses. The series had never looked better or played better. 
toss in two sizable, challenging DLC expansion packs, and you have a desert island game that could take a lifetime or two to complete. As an enormous fan of the Xbox 360 game, this felt like an absolutely perfect refinement of that original game. The team at Sandlot also seems to really come into their own here. Despite a dizzying amount of content, there is still an incredible amount of variety in the way missions are built. How many enemies? What kind of enemies? Which map? Which part of the map? You cannot approach missions like they're all the same anymore. The closest comparison I can think of is Monster Hunter Generations. From the outside, it looks like the same levels and the same monsters, but upon closer inspection, there's enough subtle variety to monster type, level type, and of course all quests vary greatly depending on your class and weapon type. However, just like with Monster Hunter Generations, EDF 4.1 is still, at the end of the day, an incredible refinement of a very old game. In this case, neither game really plays all that differently than the PS2 originals that spawned these respective franchises almost 15 years earlier. I highly recommended EDF 4.1 three years ago, and I still recommend it today. However, refining the gameplay instead of improving it or modernizing it limited its broad appeal. EDF 4.1 was a godsend for fans, but wasn't going to be enough to push the series past its status as a niche game for weirdos. Let's go! I'm a somebody! Somebody! I'm Kill this thing! Something. Shoot this thing! I have nothing to thank you for. I was fine by myself. This is where EDF 5 comes in. Released December 2018, it kind of snuck up on me and I wasn't able to sink my teeth into it for a month or so, but hell yes! EDF 5 is a new high mark for the series, the best one yet, and I'll tell you why. Improvements! On top of just being another solid, solid entry, Sandlot finally implemented changes to the gameplay that have been plaguing the series from the start. It keeps the insanely long single-player campaign, but everything is streamlined. The loot system has finally been revamped. It lets you keep some of your loot when you fail a mission, plus lets you build on other classes and guns while you play as another. That's a big one. I'm a collectathon nut, I gotta get all the stuff, and this makes it so picking up weapons you already have is no longer useless as it can potentially power up that weapon. Also now there's a new enemy, the Frogmen, or Frogmen, Frog people? Colonists I guess? Whatever. They are a replacement to the standard robots and are a lot more nuanced. They'll jump, duck out of the way, play dead, and are a formidable foe the likes of which hasn't been seen in the series. Altogether, these might seem like small things, things that should have already been fixed, but that's what I'm talking about. This is a game that's built on not needing to pull in new people, but they want to. It's just as good, if not a better place to start than EDF 4.1 if you're a newcomer. However, it is currently a PS4 exclusive and digital only. Hopefully, we'll at least get a Steam release down the line. Which brings us to Iron Rain, the latest entry. However, this is not EDF 6, it is a spin-off coming from Yux, a developer most known for the WWE 2K games. And not only that, this is the first major spin-off in the series since 2010's Insect Armageddon, which was developed by American studio Vicious Cycle Software. Yep, there have been only two major EDF games not made by Sandlot, and Insect Armageddon was not well received by the fans, but it wasn't a terrible game. Like Iron Rain, it was an attempt to broaden EDF's audience. It had multiple classes, revamped character progression, and online co-op, but the weapons didn't have the same oomph, and the style wasn't there, the cheese wasn't quite there. Oh my god, it's Raiden Man! It felt like a poor imitation instead of the real thing. It had a few really good ideas, but when the dust settled, Insect Armageddon left most EDF fans cold. So naturally, EDF fans have their worries about Iron Rain. But you can cast those worries aside. Iron Rain is not the second coming of EDF, but it's a nice change of pace and great in its own right. That's really the greatest accomplishment. It does what Insect Armageddon couldn't. Deviate from the staid EDF formula with its own style and gameplay, but still feel like a real EDF. Truly, this is not EDF 6. It's something different, but I enjoyed it. The highlight of Iron Rain for me was a player progression system that finally felt modern. Not a straight up experience system, but you're no longer scrounging for armor and weapons. You're scrounging for yellow, blue, and red energy gem thingies. And you are awarded gold credits depending on your grade at the end of each mission. While all these currencies look like a mobile game, it's not based off of any sort of freemium model. Different weapons, items, and upgrades require different combinations of currencies, and overall it felt pretty balanced. I personally loved just buying more HP. I mean, I love EDF, but I don't even want to think of how much of my adult life I've lost to collecting armor tokens. And you get to test out loadouts before you run into the next mission. Like, what? 
This is maybe my favorite new feature, and I'll riot if it doesn't become standard. Don't get me wrong, though, there's still grinding. But now, you only have to worry about building up one character that wears different robotic suits for each class. And the suits look awesome. I love the designs. Iron Rain also updates how the Wing Diver slash Jet Lifter class works. Energy now only applies to your jets, not your weapons, so burning through your batteries no longer renders you completely defenseless. Still, I found Iron Rain more challenging than expected. I'm usually Wing Diver for life, but a couple of tough missions forced me out of my comfort zone and into the brand new Prowl Rider class, which is awesome. First off, you get to ride ants, or spiders, or scorpions. It's a bug rodeo! But more importantly, it's equipped with a grappling hook that lets you zip around levels and up buildings. It's not quite Spider-Man, but it's a great middle ground between the Jet Lifter and Standard Trooper class. The extra challenge goes hand in hand with Iron Rain's bigger emphasis on variety, a lot more than in typical EDF. We got mission types that aren't just kill all the buggos, genuine attempts at story, more cinematics, and a couple of new enemies like this big boy here, hello! Gotta get a bigger TV just to fit it all on the screen! What's it talking about? Right, the story, yes. It's not high art or anything, but it's nice to see a little more world building. You play as a legendary fighter known as Closer, because your job is closing down the bug buffet once things get a little too hairy, basically. It's such a baller nickname, though. I love it. What's a bit more interesting, though, is that not all is well in EDF land after years of being invaded by the aggressors. Giving rise to a rebel faction of humans, you also have to drop the hammer on or form brief alliances with. It's a cool way to tie into the surprisingly fun competitive online multiplayer, a first for the series. I got to play a bunch of matches at a press event in February, but I wasn't able to check it out with our review copy. But what I played was really fun, and I look forward to playing more after launch. This sounds like a lot of praise, and it is but that doesn't mean Iron Rain doesn't have his shortcomings. It delivers the cornball goodness, but there's some cringy VO to be sure. Its attacks are all over the place. It looks like they lost their cool. It's a pretty and stylish game at times, but it just doesn't have the sheer scope you'd expect. Guns still hit hard and explosions still burn big and bright, but levels are smaller scale and pit you against dozens of enemies at a time, which is a far cry from the hundreds you see in EDF 5. Like, is it really an EDF game if the horizon isn't choking on a truly stupid number of insects and robots? Furthermore, we experienced a fair amount of slowdown in Iron Rain. Though we were playing on an original model PS4, it's still way more slowdown than I see in other games. Now, personally, I didn't mind the slowdown that much, but I think it would turn newcomers off. And really, that's the test at the end of the day. Is this game going to bring newcomers in like the publisher is hoping? Is this going to be EDF's big moment? Ultimately, I don't think it's going to be the breakthrough Monster Hunter World moment for the series. Weighing the triumphs and faults, I think Yuke's was able to create a game that stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with EDF 5, to the point where I can't really recommend one over the other. I think this would be a good game for EDF newbies, but the real tragedy is that somewhere between Iron Rain and Earth Defense Force 5 is an Earth Defense Force game that could actually conquer the world. We'll instead have to settle for two great games that complement each other's shortcomings, which isn't so bad. So at the end of the day, that is two new EDF games in less than four months. It's a pretty solid time to be an EDF fan, but that's going to do it for this episode. We're finished for now, so please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, all that stuff. Or if you want to support Stop Skeletons from Fighting on Patreon, like all of these awesome people here, hey, check us out and donate what you can. We appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again real soon.